Good evening and a warm welcome to all the participants for today's webinar, which is jointly organized by Crescendo Worldwide and Invest Alberta Corporation. The topic for today's webinar is Exploring Investment Opportunities in Alberta Food Processing and Agritech Sectors. The basic purpose of the webinar is to understand the overall ecosystem of the agriculture sector in Alberta and support offered by, the, uh, by Invest Alberta Corporation government and the, uh, and the government of Canada. So before we proceed ahead with, with the today's session, I would like to introduce the following speakers who will be addressing the audience. Mr. Sudhiranjan Banerjee, Senior Commercial Officer and Investment Programming. Mr. Brad Froner, Director of Investment Agriculture. Mr. Eaton Van Stratton, Department of Agriculture and Forestry. Mr. Mario Orellena, the Senior Investment Attraction Officer. Before we proceed with the session, we would like to play a short video about Alberta, followed by which we will be having our first poll session. Now we will start with our first poll session. I request all the participants to actively take part in the uh, poll session. I guess all the participants can see the questions uh, on the screen. lot of companies participating in the poll session. of companies participating and there, there is a good interest shown by our audience.
I request companies who have not voted right now to vote and to participate because we are going to close the session within two minutes. There's a good response by the audience. Okay, so now we have uh, we are ending the first poll session, and I would request uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Banerjee to start with his presentation. Hand over to you, Mr. Sudhiranjan. Thanks a lot, Ketki. First of all, a very warm good evening to all my friends and the participants of this webinar in India. Uh, on behalf of the Invest Alberta Corporation, as well as the Ministry of Agriculture, the Government of Alberta. I would like to thank you for your time for participating in this session about Alberta's agriculture sector and opportunities for investment. And I'd also like to thank our partners, Crescendo Worldwide, for organizing this and for putting this together. And with that, uh, I hope that you have a fruitful and valuable session today. And without further ado, I think I'll jump into the first uh, session for the day, for the evening, with which I would like to invite Mr. Brad Fournier who's the Director for Investment Agriculture at the Invest Alberta Corporation, who will be talking about the Invest Alberta Corporation and how Invest Alberta Corporation can actually help you establish your presence here and expand your business here in the province of Alberta. So over to you, Brad. Thank you. Thank you and good evening to everyone uh, that is participating in our live streaming event. We very much appreciate you taking the time uh, to join us. What I would like to convey this evening is that Alberta is a land of opportunity. Uh, there is an extraordinary, uh, it, it's an extraordinary time uh, for business growth and expansion to be happening uh, in the province and in the agriculture sector in particular. Um, I, I hope many of you have had an opportunity to uh, enjoy Alberta for it's an abundance of beauty uh, our Rocky Mountains, our glacial fed rivers, uh, and our beautiful cities that rank among the highest in the world uh, for standards of living and for great places to do business as well. Invest Alberta was formed in October of 20 as a government agency. And uh, we are dedicated to support uh, and have conversations like this with businesses around the world to draw and attract their business interest and investments into the province of Alberta and work with them with uh, different layers of government, as I am with our colleagues today with the Department of Agriculture and Forestry and Rural Economic Development. And we work in a multitude of different levels in, an, in a series of areas. So we will happily have conversations with businesses to explore um, the process for actually bringing your business to Alberta, uh, any conversations around uh, immigration, setting up your business and the professional services that uh, are required or uh, will assist you in doing that, uh, recruiting staffing, settlement and immigration issues, helping you get to the point where you are a zero in, in a site selection, as well as any potential uh, incentives that may exist, both from a federal and provincial level, and then working with you and your business at the municipal level as well uh, for any potential uh, dollars there to grow your business. In addition to that, and being present in Alberta, we actually have um, 12 international offices and the capacity that will be doubling that uh, by the end of this summer. 
So all through um, uh, Asia, uh, including New Delhi, through Europe uh, and the Middle East, and then expanding largely through um, the United States where we don't have uh, offices and are currently building those out as well. In many of these offices, we have dedicated agriculture staff. So in addition to uh, what we can provide here in Alberta, we work with our agriculture colleagues from both an investment, but also to help facilitate trade through all of these regions uh, as well. Canada is known as a breadbasket for the world. Uh, Canada is a leading exporter in canola, uh, cereals such as wheat and oats, mustard, as well as uh, lentils, and a major exporter of chickpeas, beef and pork, as well as potatoes. Within Canada, Alberta is uh, an enormous uh, producer of, uh, of those as well. Uh, in Alberta, we produce half of all of the barley that is produced uh, in Canada, a third of all of Canada's wheat, and 20% of the oats and chickpeas uh, as well. So there is a diversity of cropping as well as an apple supply for uh, businesses that are adding value to those crops and to secondary food processing as well. We also have the, the, the vast majority of livestock production that is part of Canada's export within the province of Alberta as well, with substantial uh, processing uh, for cereal as well as livestock. So unique in the province is our diversity in regions and soil uh, temperature. And so depending on the type of crops, uh, they may be grown in several different regions within the province. And what is consistent throughout the province is that we are very carbon rich soils, uh, close to forestry and have an abundance of wood and municipal waste streams as well. Uh, for potential application and value added streams. Alberta exports almost $12.5 billion worth of primary and process to agriculture. We have multitudes uh, of multinational companies that are present as part of those major exporters and processors. And within the province, we now have a very, uh, a largely growing sector of greenhouse. Um, only 8% of the food uh, in vegetables and fruit uh, that Alberta consumes are grown here in the province. So there is a real interest based on the pandemic and based on um, food, uh, food production, food scarcity, food security kinds of conversations about growing that greenhouse availability so that we have more supply of, uh, uh, of that uh, fruits and vegetables. And that is happening through our greenhouse sector and vertical growth space. We have a very advanced uh, agri-tech uh, innovation capacity. Um, Alberta government has just made an investment of $118 million uh, to further our uh, irrigation that is largely positioned in Southern Alberta. And we have one of the most advanced smart farms in all of Canada that actually leads our ag tech innovation hub located in central Alberta. We have a vast uh, food processing uh, center and my colleagues are going to expand more on that. But uniquely, we are positioned to have uh, labor availability, access to transport, and good utilities as well. And because of that, we've had a rapidly growing food processing sector uh, over the last decade as well. And we would amply invite more of that to, to occur to keep pace with the demand that is happening uh, within the province as well as exporting that pro product around the world as well. Alberta is redefining itself in all of its sustainability 
80% of all renewable investment is happening in Alberta over the next uh, five years. And roughly 75% uh, of 1.4 billion is spent annually uh, in that space. Largely, all of the next or near-term investments that are happening in the province of Alberta by Alberta companies are, are focused in on um, carbon neutrality and decarbonizing uh, the economy in Alberta as well as Canada, as many businesses have made that an ambition to become carbon neutral uh, within the next decade or two. And as part of that, Alberta is taking great steps in becoming uh, known internationally as a carbon neutral zone and making several investments in that space uh, in carbon capture, as well as legislation in terms of reducing its greenhouse gases and reducing its impact on climate change. And just recently, uh, as seen by all of the momentum and the policy change happening, we we're seeing record numbers of uh, dollars flowing into the province, both from venture capital, as well as private equity. And we are on pace uh, over the next decade as well to continue to set record after record as agriculture becomes a key investment space to occur and Alberta being that destination. I'd like to turn it over now to my colleagues to further our conversation. Thanks a lot, Brad, for that really informative presentation about Alberta's agriculture sector. I'm sure that all our participants must have found the information valuable. And uh, with that, I think that's the cue for us to go into the second poll, which will probably understand a little bit of the kind of expectations and requirements that our participants have from this session. So with that, I'd request uh, our team at Crescendo Worldwide to run the second poll. And you will see a bunch of questions there. Uh, first and foremost is, of course, the subsectors that are of interest to you. So you could look at food processing, canola crushing, or grain processing, and the kind of business that you're looking to set up. Uh, so either we are looking at a greenfield investment, brownfield investment. Are you looking at a partnership acquisition or a sales and distribution office? And finally, uh, in terms of the time horizon for your investments in Canada, uh, what are the timelines that we are looking at uh, in the next one year, next two years, or are we looking at the next couple of years? So for those three questions, I request and urge all the participants to vote actively for the session so that we get a better idea of what you're looking for. And based on the answers that you provide, we can give you a more tailored a session and a more customized session. Uh, it'll help us answer your questions better. It'll help us fulfill your expectations better. And it'll help the panelists understand better what you're looking to do. So I request you again to vote actively in the session. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have another 30 to 40 seconds that the poll will be open and we will be closing it in the next 30 to 40 seconds. So I request you once again to please vote if you have not voted already. Please indicate your answers if you have not done that already. Thank you.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are now closing the poll. The last five, 10 seconds, if you'd still like to vote, oh, and it is gone. So if you missed out on the opportunity, uh, apologies for that, but I hope you'd had the chance to vote. And we will be looking at the results of the poll uh, after we have completed all the three polls. But with that said, I think we will now move into another segment of this presentation. Uh, I'll request my colleagues at Team Crescendo to play the video that we have for all of you. Uh, team Crescendo, please. Thank you. We're a wholly owned subsidiary company of the Meatless Farm. We're based originally in the UK and now the Netherlands and uh, the US as well. So we produce a, a textured protein. So that is a pea protein as a base for us right now that's taken and texturized into something that has a, a meat-like mimicking uh, texture. We came across a problem that was we essentially couldn't grow fast enough with the suppliers that we had. When we got to, to Calgary and Alberta, we basically found everything we needed. There's so much ecosystem around to support new business opportunities, whether that's Calgary Economic Development, the Agriculture and Forestry Commission, Invest Alberta. The potential for anyone to start and grow a business here is the best environment to do it in. We've gone from concept and idea to finding a location, having a facility built all within a year. Living in Calgary has been one of the top places to live in North America certainly rings true. You've got the Rockies on your doorstep. You've certainly got some of the friendliest people around the world, I think, here. So there's a really good opportunity for a, for a good life. We live by one core value, and that's that we want to be a force for good. It means putting people planet first, and then profit comes after that. In Alberta, you can do business faster. For a startup in an industry that we're in, speed is the key. And that's really where we see the opportunity here by being able to invest quickly and build out capacity and quality that we can then move things much further on than we perhaps would have done somewhere else. And as a global business, you have a fantastic distribution hub. Anyone who tries to do business here will have a higher chance of success than, say, somewhere else. Thank you, Crescendo team. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what you just saw was the success story of a company called Lovingly Made Ingredients, uh, which came to Alberta and then they went on to become a fairly large company in the pea based protein sector. And you've heard already from Brad of some of, of, some of the aspects in how Alberta can support you in your endeavor to expand and diversify your business. Uh, but more about that in terms of the agriculture sector and how the government of Alberta can play a critical role in helping you establish your business and more varied facets and elements of Alberta's agriculture. I would now like to turn over the session to my colleagues from the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Rural Economic Development, Government of Alberta, Mr. Etienne Van Straten and Mr. Mario Orellana, who are the Senior Investment Attraction Officers uh, at the Government of Alberta. So with that, over to you, Etienne and Mario. Thank you. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Mario? Yes, I am here. Okay. You can start off there, Mario. Great. Thank you very much, Senor. Let's go and speak about uh, agribusiness investment opportunities in Alberta. Uh, thank you for this opportunity and hi to all the audience that we have over there in India. Um, Alberta, as my colleague from the Invest Alberta Corporation was, was saying, is a land of opportunities. My colleague Etienne and, and me, we work at the 
at the Alberta Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Rural Economic Development. We are with the investment attraction section. The investment attraction section is your first point of contact to get information about the agri-processing sector and all the opportunities in the agri-processing sector. And also we are your first point of contact to help you set up your operations here in, in Alberta. We have the mandate to attract, retain and expand value add processing, processing companies in Alberta. Alberta is a very known producer of, of agriculture, agriculture crops. Um, we produce uh, barley, wheat, canola, oat, and, and pulses, chickpeas, lentils, and peas. Um, but Alberta is not just a simple producer of, ag uh, of, agri -pro uh, of agri commodities. Alberta has been recognized as a sustainable producer of, of, of pulses, specifically, specifically uh, peas. And in Alberta, you will have a, a strong agri-processing agri -processing ecosystem. We have, we have uh, more than 800 companies, agri-processing companies, uh, very busy in different, in different areas from grain processing, uh, plant-based protein development, uh, ingredients development, canola processing, oats processing, et cetera. Uh, you will find here in Alberta uh, a lot of very well-known names, uh, such as Bimbo Canada from Mexico, Cargill, lovingly made ingredients from the UK, uh, McCain Foods, uh, Bongi, uh, ADM, Archer Daniel Midlands, etc. We have abundant raw material. Uh, the strength of Alberta is the fact that you, in this province you can, you can integrate uh, vertically because we have the raw materials. We have a, a strong uh, agri-processing ecosystem. Uh, we have a very trained agricultural, agricultural scientists and um, food accelerators and incubators and, and grants and financing to support, to support your agriculture endeavor. What are the opportunities? Uh, we have identified eight activities where Alberta has the highest potential uh, to grow into, an, into a well-developed agriculture cluster. Uh, food processing, plant-based protein, canola processing, grain processing are some of the main, the main sectors that we have identified uh, for, uh, for, for Alberta to, to develop the agri-processing uh, cluster. We are also very focused now in agricultural technology. Our farmers and our agri-processors are adopting the latest technologies in, uh, in, in egg tech to automate the, the, their operations. Food processing in Alberta is, 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 growing, is growing rapidly. Uh, it, it, is an strong, it is an strong sector. It is the largest manufacturing sector uh, with sales of 15.5 billion uh, in 2020 and export of 12.4 billion. Uh, the sector employs uh, close to 70,000 people is very important for, uh, for Alberta. Uh, there are a lot of facilities here to locate your, 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 your endeavor, greenfield and, uh, and brownfield. Transportation, infra uh, transportation infrastructure is one of the areas where Alberta is very, very competitive uh, among, among uh, prairie cities. Alberta has 
has a strong competitive advantage in transportation because we are well connected to the port of to the port of San Rupert and the port of Vancouver, which are the the, the shortest distance between North America and the rapid uh, growing economies in Asia. Labor and utilities, we are very competitive and the most important thing regarding labor is that here in Alberta, you will find a well-trained uh, army of scientists, engineers, and technicians in the area of food processing. As I was mentioned to you, plant-based protein is one of is, is it's one of our main priorities. Uh, you watch a video. We are very proud that we attract to Alberta the lovingly made ingredients, a fully owned subsidiary of the Meatless Farm in the UK. And uh, they have expressed that they located in Alberta because of our strength in the product in the production of uh, of uh, plant-based protein protein crops particular particularly peas which grow everywhere in alberta uh, everywhere you go in alberta you will find peas you will you will find chicks peas uh, is, is 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 an abundant of 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 pulses Canola is our is our next important important crop, and in canola we offer a uh, canola processors the best conditions to develop uh, to develop an endeavor. Alberta, as I as I mentioned, is very close to the to the port of Vancouver to chip the to chip either canola seed or canola oil to market worldwide. And also here in Alberta, you will be very, very close to the to the main pro, uh, main production production centers of, of canola. We have a lot of farmers uh, uh, producing canola concentrated in in the north of in the north area of, of Alberta and also and also in the in the south. As you can see there in the in the graph before. We have a deficit in, 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 in processing of canola. Um, we need to attract more, more, canola, more canola processors. We are processing, crushing just half of the canola of the canola we produce. Grain processing is, is another important, important sector. Uh, you can also find here spring wheat, durum wheat, oats. Uh, and barley. Uh, our barley is, is, is in part processed here in Alberta, in part shipped to markets worldwide, and is and, 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 and is using the production of a, of a lot of of a lot of beverage. Uh, oats processing, we are very proud of having a lot of oats processor. Canadian oats is one of one of them from from, from Mexico. And I think Etienne can speak about the uh, wheat because he has been working recently with uh, an important case in wheat. Yeah, too. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, as Mario mentioned, uh, we have an abundance of wheat as well, uh, over 9 million tons a year produced. And uh, most of that is exported to various parts of the world. Um, we are also an oat producer that um, produces 40% of Canada's organic oats and quite a bit of that oats actually finds its way to India as well uh, via processes at this point in uh, Sri Lanka. Um, our Durham wheat is, uh, that's the wheat that they normally make pasta from. Uh, is very sought after internationally. And we have uh, many countries, especially those in uh, North Africa and the Middle East that uh, uh, use this type of wheat. Uh, we, we do have uh, quite a substantial number of large uh, buyers in those regions. Um, we also have opportunities in um, aspects such as um, flour milling, that is still a sector that's fairly underserviced in uh, Alberta. 
So that's definitely an area that uh, companies can look at too. And then there's also seed cleaning and grain storage uh, opportunities as well for companies that uh, might be interested in, in that specifically. Um, Brad, earlier on in his presentation, touched upon the, the greenhouses and horticulture or the controlled environment agriculture. Um, we have seen quite a number of companies uh, coming in from abroad to set up their um, vertical farms in Alberta. And uh, these farms are, are usually very technologically um, intensive. And many companies have come up with their own uh, technology and innovation as well to make this, uh, this uh, sector much more efficient. And uh, I hope to see that this continues growing uh, in the years to come. Now, one of the other, other topics uh, that uh, we are discussing apart from food processing is the ag tech uh, sector in Alberta. The sector has been growing at, a, at a, quite a steady pace over the past uh, two or three years with uh, places like Calgary, the city of Calgary and the city of Edmonton becoming hubs for uh, technology companies. Um, these companies also, for instance, companies that make use of artificial intelligence um, are looking towards Alberta because uh, the University of Alberta is, I think, one of the top five universities in the world as far as artificial intelligence uh, uh, research and development is concerned. So that's definitely an area for companies in India as well that make use of this kind of technology uh, to look at Alberta as an opportunity. Um, the ecosystems that uh, are ma mainly found in Alberta is precision agriculture, and that is mainly because of now more than 20 million hectares of farmland. Um, and as mentioned, all the grain production in Alberta, these farms need the most specialized equipment and technology to uh, be efficient as they can. And I, I'm not sure if you can see the picture, I'll just move a bit behind me. Uh, you'll find farms in Alberta that have mainly, most of the farms have maybe three or four people running the whole farm. Um, and it's normally the farmer plus his wife and children that uh, get involved in this. So this is definitely uh, something that we can uh, uh, consider when companies come to Alberta is precision agriculture, technology, robotics, drones, uh, food safety is very important. Canada's got a, a fantastic food safety record and companies that come in with technology for food safety is definitely sought after. Um, innovative foods, we take, for instance, lovingly made foods. They, uh, they are one of the companies that um, have come up with more innovation in food as well. And uh, then ag bio, which is more on the bioprocessing side, we have biomass, as Brad has mentioned, uh, products such as hemp, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, companies uh, develop products from, and then also fairly novel farming systems. Uh, and that, again, uh, leads to the vertical farming uh, sector. Uh, our logistics is world class, and Mario has touched upon that. Um, as you can see there on the on the maps, there's a road network that goes from Canada straight into Mexico, and uh, this offers the it's called the the, the Canamex uh, Highway, the Canada America Mexico Highway, and um, this corridor is used by companies in Alberta to to transport if they transport by road to transport uh, products down there. Uh, the rail network is very intensive, extensive as well, from east to west in Canada, and then also from, uh, from Alberta south into the U.S. We also have uh, a good access to the port of Los Angeles and the port of Long Beach in California and the U.S., and many companies make use of those ports as well to, to ship, especially if products need to go uh, from the U.S. Through the, through the Panama Canal to other parts to Europe, for instance. Uh, the airport in Edmonton, the Edmonton International Airport, as it is busy developing a very large uh, business park that companies can uh, set up their businesses in and uh, also make use of air freight in cases where the products are maybe too small to send by 
rail or road. And um, then we also, as Mario mentioned, close to the, to the ports of uh, Prince Rupert and Vancouver uh, in Western Canada itself. Um, companies investing in Alberta will also have the advantage of making use of our 15 free trade agreements with uh, various countries in the world. The main one is the Canada, US, Mexico free trade agreement. And companies that set up here and produce here uh, would be able to make use of uh, the benefits of those uh, free trade agreements. Thank you very much. And uh, as mentioned, Mario and I are with the Alberta Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Rural Economic Development in Edmonton. Thanks a lot, Etienne and Mario, for that really wonderful presentation and uh, for sharing all that information uh, about the Alberta's agriculture sector and also the tech sector within agriculture. So thank you for that. And uh, with that, uh, I hope that all the participants and our friends here have gained a little more information about uh, Alberta's agriculture sector and some of the opportunities that exist in the investment uh, uh, segment. So with that, let's conduct our final poll. And this poll should be the one that gives us all the results. And Shuleen. with that, of course, you will see. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, Mario, can we just quickly conclude the poll? Yes. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, you'll have uh, the third and the final poll in front of your screens right, right now. Uh, it's got fairly simple questions and uh, basically what we are trying to ensure is that you've had the information that you were looking to receive and whether Alberta is a potential investment destination for you or not. And if you'd like us to get in touch with you and contact you for further conversations. So again, this poll will be open for about a minute. So I encourage all of you to actively vote and participate in the poll so that we can get in touch with you and talk to you about your requirements. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, if you have already not voted for the third and the final poll here, I request you to vote and indicate your choices as quickly as possible. We'll have this for another 15 or 20 seconds. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the last call for voting on the third poll session. Uh, if you have not done that already, I request you to do that as quickly as possible. And we will move on to the Q&A session after this, where we will basically 
have our panelists answer questions or other specific questions that you might have about Alberta's agriculture sector and the possibilities around investments uh, within Alberta's agriculture sector. So thank you, uh, Team Crescendo, for running the poll. And uh, hopefully we will see the results in a very short time. Uh, just for everybody's information, you'll be stopping the live stream. And now we are moving on to the Q&A session. And I do have a few questions already 